to discuss. We're joined by the Executive Director, Anne Bernstein. Ms. Bernstein, thank you for, for being with us. We've heard about infrastructure plans many times, and, and I think the, the huge uh, focus was around the COVID-19 relief package. So, so what has or hasn't happened since then? Well, infrastructure is a key pillar in the president's economic recovery plan or strategy. And the truth is that the head of infrastructure in the presidency says they're working on a lot of projects, but none of them are ready. And that this will take a long time because a whole lot of things have to be resolved before they can come to market. Now, we know that the private sector is ready and willing to invest in infrastructure in South Africa, but they can't wait forever. And they need the right projects to get involved in. So the private sector is saying, instead of talking about 272 projects that have been pitched or 76 that are being looked at or 50 focused on, let's pick three or four big projects that the private sector can get involved in. Let's get them ready to take to market and let's get something to happen. But before that can happen, the government has to do a whole lot of things. They have to get rid of regulations and get the right sort of regulatory environment for public-private partnerships. They also have to deal with law and order, as your previous report showed. You can't invest in new infrastructure when existing infrastructure is being destroyed, when our current infrastructure is not protected from criminals, and when you start to build new activities, local so-called construction mafias come and threaten to extort both jobs and much else from uh, construction companies and investors. So there are a lot of things that the government has to get right. And business also has to be much clearer on all these things that are needed before they will be able to invest. So the illusion of infrastructure driving South Africa's economic growth recovery is not yet a reality, and we need some hard decisions before this is going to 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 come to fruition. Yeah, I mean, this almost sounded like quite a quick fix um, in in 2020 when the, the president talks about infrastructure and the job creation uh, thereof. It was in reference to the jobs that had been lost uh, due to COVID-19. But what you're laying out is that this is actually a very long-term fix, uh, if, if we can get it right, for infrastructure to, to even be a fix at all? Well, I think there are two things. People spend a lot of time talking about projects, 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 and it's quite clear the government has not yet got its act together for the private sector to invest. But you shouldn't forget that if some big, bold decisions are taken and implemented speedily, we can get the private sector investing much more in our ports, in fixing the railways, in our roads, in water and many other things. So there's lots to be done. It's not only state-led projects, but also policy decisions that have to be boldly taken and then implemented so the private sector can invest and get to work. So there are things that could be done much more speedily. I don't understand why the regulatory amendments that are needed for public-private partnerships have not been fast-tracked. It's, it's hard to really understand why things are not moving faster, uh, but our contribution with the report we've released yesterday and the workshop we held last week was to encourage a much more frank dialogue between investors and the state on what actually is needed to get done. Am I right in saying that that report says that no significant government-led uh, infrastructural project has even been initiated since 2018? And that's way before COVID-19 and way before we again touted infrastructure as, as a wonderful job creator. I'm afraid so. That it's is incredible. the view of the private sector and that's what was came out of the workshop. So this is very... This is very bad news and hopefully will spur some much greater decisiveness in, in yeah. government action 
to actually deliver some space for infrastructure. Of course, infrastructure is not a panacea, it's not a silver bullet for all our economic ills, but to get the environment right, to take the policy decisions required, to sort out, to stop pretending that this state is able to deliver, yeah. you know, 50 projects tomorrow. It can't. The state is weak and corrupt. We have to choose three or four things to help unlock the gridlock and the paralysis that has taken hold. And we'll learn by doing yeah. that we need to get that environment right and it requires some decisive action. Uh, and you said even the regulatory um, legal changes aren't there. Uh, just explain, so, so for us lay people, so when we talk about 272 projects being pitched, you mean that's still just ideas? Um, and and the, the infrastructure pro projects haven't even been identified, laid out, uh, what needs to be done. You probably need incredible skills to do that, to identify the gaps. And then you're working across uh, municipalities, I'm sure, building a, a bridge, but... Uh, uh, national government is is involved. How should it work? Are, are the skills there? What's missing that, that this has stalled? Well, let me say two things. There's an entire page in our report on the government architecture to deal with infrastructure, and it is convoluted and quite difficult to follow. So that needs to be to be much simplified. It seems to us also that you have to distinguish between projects that should be funded by or your and my tax money and projects that can be funded by the private sector who need a revenue stream. They're investing other people's money, they're taking risks, they need to know they can get a revenue stream. So when people don't, you know, the whole dilemma around e-tolls in Gauteng is a, is a big problem and a decision which has been delayed for year after year after year after year needs to be taken if yeah. we're going to get new investment in toll roads. So you, you mean if, if um, uh, that could actually deter foreign investors from, from com coming in? Of the course. whole debacle uh, around the e-tolls? Yes, you don't have certainty about revenue streams. So there are a lot of very basic issues here um, and we need to be completely realistic. So what projects are going to be funded and how will they be managed in municipalities which have essentially collapsed? I don't know. We need a plan for yeah. that. We need to distinguish between those kinds of projects that are probably tax funded and those kinds of projects where the private sector can get involved in expanding our ports and getting revenue from that. In right. helping to fix the railways and getting revenue from that, yeah. as well as helping to create a much better environment for all our companies to get goods to market. So there's lots to be done, but it's, it's quite shocking to discover how little progress has been made. Right, thank you. Uh, that was Anne Bernstein, Executive Director of the Centre for Development and Enterprise.